So I really haven't covered this topic pretty much ever. I've covered these types of cameras before and we've gone into that, you know, uh, some of the perks and stuff of the cameras and et cetera, but I've never really tackled bridge cameras. And some of the comments on a recent video, I'll, his name is Jacob R, I'll leave that for what that is. Uh, Jacob really wanted to know, like, should you use a, a smartphone camera compared to an actual bridge camera? But th the big thing is, what is actually a bridge camera? And it's exactly as it sounds. It's a bridge between two different products. Now, someone might interpret that to be, you would use this bridge camera to learn on. You're just starting out. You, this is something great to learn on. You get the best of both worlds. I don't fully agree with that, but a bridge camera is exactly as it sounds. Bridging between both things. And one of the most popular ways to think about it it goes to like a point and shoot cameras to DSLR or mirrorless cameras that that gap going from point and shoot all in one type of cameras to cameras that you have all these advanced features and interchangeable lenses, etc. A bridge camera fits right in the middle, no interchangeable lens, usually what you would call a super zoom. So like, you know, blah, something to 200 or 500 that, you know, loses quality as you, you know, do the super zoom for the most part, but you kind of get that advanced features as well. And that's kind of where the bridge uh, cameras sit. And I don't think it's more of just an educational camera. I really think it hits a couple different markets. So let's just talk about a little bit and the kind of the origin. Now back in the day, and we still have it around, we have film cameras. But the one big thing that disrupted film cameras was what? Digital cameras, the emergence of digital cameras. So the big thing was is there a way you can go in between film and, and keep your film, but get some of this newer, greater technology? And then you get a camera like the Nikon F5 that was created that was, you know, absurdly expensive. What was it, like $10,000 or something when it first came out? Like it shot film, but had a lot of digital tendencies. And that was kind of the, the bridge camera between got people from film getting used to them to digital. And that was the big divide. You know, that was the big thing. So, you know, nowadays we have, we have a, a lot of cameras like that. You know, point and shoot, power shot, Canon power shots to, you know, your run of the day DSLR and mirrorless, whatever brand you have right now. We have these all in one bridge cameras. And I'm gonna give you a couple examples of some of the stuff that we have in 2021. Um, and bridge camera doesn't necessarily mean cheap. There are some very, very professional, decent bridge cameras out there that cost $700,000, $800,000. But then I'm gonna mention a few that are definitely a little bit more affordable or cheaper. For example, the Nikon uh, P950, which you may have known like, or is it the P900 from before, where it was just that the touting of that moon, that was super zoom on the moon, that was decently you know, clear and the image quality was good, etc. So that is a bridge camera. But they also have the P1000, and for example, the Sony RX10 Mark IV and the RX10 III. Like, these together, they're Canon, Fuji, they're Canons, etc. out there too, but those are bridge type of cameras. Probably physically a little bit bigger, maybe not necessarily a full sensor. Some of them are, some of them aren't. You have a super zoom lens, you don't have to worry about getting into all these lenses and everything. Some of them even shoot raw photos. Some of them, even on the Canon side of things, may have dual pixel AF, advanced autofocusing type of things. So it's not amateur-like anymore. So that is the allure. The allure for maybe an amateur who doesn't necessarily want a point and shoot. They want something a little bit more. They want a, even a hobbyist or, or someone who travels, they want that all-in-one camera, but they don't want to dedicate themselves necessarily to an ecosystem of a camera. And I think bridge cameras are definitely a good thing in the economy. I know some people are against them. They're saying it's kind of a waste, you know, just get into it, get your basic kit lens, then build from there. But not everyone needs all of that junk. Bridge cameras are very, very good. Um, I even grew, I even kind of used one and I wrote it down because I didn't remember the name, but it was the Fuji S100 FD. Once again, not the greatest camera in the world. It was like, what, 10 megapixels or something? T megapixels don't matter in my opinion, 100% for the most part, but it kind of got me to learn more than a point and shoot. I was able to do a couple more advanced things into it and that's what got me to learn. I was able to take photos, 
do it a little bit more, and then I eventually got into uh, the Nikon D3000, and then etc. to you know what I do today. Bridge cameras, very, very good. I think they're healthy. They're a good idea. Hopefully, I kind of explained that you know pretty well in these past couple minutes, but compared to a smartphone, a, smart go a smartphone is good for conveniency, but I you still need a camera in my opinion to to get into it i mean the zooms and stuff on on the phones out right now are not that good and if you're traveling you probably want a little bit more and and if you want that more advanced features and everything especially on the apple side of things and i don't know to me a lot of the phones out there especially on the the apple side of things and the apps they really kind of suck there's really no good raw they're, they're just not good. Now, like the Pixel and stuff like that, there's some really, really good things, etc. cetera. But you re I, 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 camera phones are fine, but are, are they really that serious? No. Can you take things that are great? Yes. But that's because you're a good photographer if you do. But bridge cameras, I think they're a good idea. And especially if you get something more affordable, under $1,000, you can really develop on that, grow with that, travel with that, do everything that you need. And if you decide you want something a little bit more serious, then you go there. I think the power shot type of camera should be dead. The actual point and shoot for the most part, like the, the power shots, etc. Let me know your thoughts below. I don't know. Bridge, uh, bridge cameras I think are, are, are very solid. <laughs>